Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us in this midweek Lenten worship. We continue our meditation on the I Am sayings of Jesus Christ. Each I am saying of Jesus is a powerful witness to who our Jesus is, who is Christ, and what he can do in our personal life. Today we have a very important topic. I am the resurrection of the life. There are many different ideas about resurrection. Many a time people confuse the Christian community because some of the independent churches have their own understanding. So I would like to share with you <clears throat> the whole, the understanding of the resurrection in the whole Bible, starting from the Old Testament, coming to the, the last book, the book of Revelation. Now, we will start with the history. Definitely, when people witnessed in the primitive age, when someone died, when they witnessed death, definitely they would have been really shocked. Probably they would have thought, he's just sleeping. Then they realized slowly the body decaying and perishing, and they would have found that that was the end of the parents or uncles or some of the relatives. Now we all know the famous uh, display varuma pa? Varliya? Sorry, utru parala. You know the, uh, the what is that uh, nursery school rhyme? Solomon Grundy. Born on Monday, okay, christened on Tuesday, married on Wednesday, and it goes on, and he died on Saturday, and buried on Sunday. That is the end of Solomon Grundy. When people thought death puts an end to one's life, the Bible was very, very clear. That is, there is life after death. Now, we see that in the very first book, which is the first book. Before I leave this church, you should know all these elementary things. I just have one more year in this congregation. <laughs> okay? Which is the first book? Auntie, Munnali, you said that. No, Auntie. Job. Job is the first book written. Of course, in the Bible, Genesis comes first. But the first book to be written is Job, the book of Job. There, in the very first book written, in Job chapter 19, this is what we read in verse 25. Verse 19, chapter 19, verse 25 onwards. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last... He will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God. He doesn't stop with that. He says, whom shall I see for myself? And my eyes shall behold not another. So he was very, very clear in revealing the revelation that even after death, he is going to live. And he is going to see the Lord. Now, after that, if you look at Genesis and other books, we find in the Old Testament different views. Particularly, one view is that after death, all the people who die go to a dark place. 
In English, the word Sheol is used. S-H-E-O-L, Sheol. In Tamil Bible, we have the word Badalam. So, initially, the Jewish people thought, even though they had the book of Job, they thought all the dead people, the souls will go to a dark place and there they will be there. Now, we know that there is a dark place. Okay, the souls will go and stay there. And even when Saul wanted to speak to Samuel, you know, uh, which calls the soul of the Samuel. And Samuel scolds them for disturbing him from his sleep or rest. So we know that there is, there is a dark place. But it is not for all the souls. Okay, it is not for all the souls. But majority of the souls. Then they thought the person who dies, that's the end. And they live in dark place, which is called Seol. Now, when you look at the other views that we have in the world, <clears throat> we have different views. One people, one group of people thought in India as well as in Greek. Okay, this is not a just view. Uh, specifically for Indian context, even the Europeans thought in the migration of souls. That is, when you die, your life ends, but your soul continues to live. And it takes different births. It continues to take birth. Life one after the other. But the thing is, in the next life, you won't know who you are going to be and what you are going to be. Because in Indian concept, they say, after death, you may be born again as a dog, or a cat, or an insect. There is a conversation between a grandfather and a little boy. The boy was picking up stones and throwing at the dogs. So in order to stop that, the grandfather told the little boy, don't do that. In next life, you will be born as a dog, and the dog will be a boy, and it will throw stones at you. And the little boy said, Tata, that's not the case. In previous birth, I was a dog, and that dog was a boy. <laughs> it hit me, so now I am doing it. Now, this is not an acceptable view. Bible is very clear. In Hebrew chapter 11, verse 25, this is what we read. 27. And just as it is appointed for a man to die once, and after that comes judgment. So there is only one life. Even though Hindus believe in migration of souls, even the Greeks believed in migration of souls, the scripture is very clear, there is only one life. There is no migration of soul, no birth after birth, no karma theory, we don't accept that. Now, there are some people who think after death, that's the end of your life. You are no more. A true Christian cannot say no more. Because we are going to live continuously. We have eternal life. But some other people think once a person dies, he is no more. That's the end. Actually, I, have, I had a very interesting experience. We were doing evangelistic work in Tirthani area. And we used to preach in the marketplace and in the streets. And once after preaching, we go to different houses and pray. So I met one of the elderly person, persons and uh, asked her, just to share the gospel with her, I began with this question. Ama, ni yaranda pargi yanga pove teri ma. 
do you know where you will go after death she kept quiet i just repeated the same question and she said enga povan mannoda manna iduven i will be dust to dust that's all that's the end of my life and that was a very shocking information for me because i was born in a pastor's family i attended sunday school vbs youth fellowship and i have never heard such view that was the first time i heard that there is end of life after death then i asked the elders in the villages and they said es tambi many of us believe that there is no life after death once you die they burn you or bury you that's all that's the end so many people in india believe that many people in other countries believe that once you die that is the end but scripture doesn't teach us now there are certain religion that talks about life after death muslims they talk about life after death zoroastrians that is parsis they also believe in life after death but they have different views and there is for them they don't know on what basis god will send people to heaven and heaven or hell but we have a clear cut view in the scripture so whatever it is people had different views about life after death now what does the scripture says scripture is very very clear our christian understanding is that man is born once and he dies once after that he has to face a judgment now is it for all christians here i would like to share a clear sequence that we see in the scripture now even though many people think in different ways i want you to hold on to the book of revelation book of revelation there we have a clear sequence now sometimes people think okay when jesus comes the dead people will rise the people who are already died will rise again now there are some people who say okay the believers who live at the time when jesus comes they also will be transformed they will be taken up to heaven now what about the final judgment now i want you to turn along with me to the book of revelation chapter 19 in chapter 19 and 20 we have a clear sequence about what will happen when jesus comes again what is going to happen in the second coming now if you look at chapter 19 <clears throat> you will see from verse 11 onwards the rider on a white horse that is jesus christ because it talks about his cloth was dripped in blood and his name in verse 13 his name is called the word of god so that was none other than jesus christ so he comes to earth now what happens now the beast the satan and the false prophet the bad trinity they will fight against jesus in fact they want to fight against jesus but what happens the one of the archangels michael he wages war against satan beast and the false prophets and all will be captured and there will be no war they all will be put in a dungeon and jesus will rule for 1000 years okay now when he comes 
as we read in 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 where St. Paul is very clear the trumpet will sound Jesus will come and he will raise the believers who had already died in Jesus Christ he will raise them up and the believers who would live at the time when Jesus comes they will be transformed they will go they will take it up, they will meet Jesus Christ in the cloud, and the whole company will come down to earth. Jesus will come on earth, and along with him, all the people who have already died, and all the believers who have got transformed, will come back to earth. And here, if you want me to give you a proof text, look at chapter 20. In verse 4, Then I saw thrones, and seated on them were those, not just single person, there are many people, okay? Seated on them were those to whom the authority to judge was committed. Okay, who are these people? The people who died for the Lord. Those who believed in God. And if you look at the verse 5, or for the end of four, they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. That is, Jesus would come and there will be first resurrection. The dead will rise. The people who already live will get transformed. Jesus will come along with them to the earth and he will rule for a thousand years. Okay. <clears throat> Now, in verse 5, that's what we read. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. That is, the first resurrection will take place when Jesus comes. The people who already died will rise again. Not the other people. Non-believers will not come when Jesus comes for the second time. That is, before the thousand years rule. Is it clear? Now, other souls will be there in the hell or the Sheol, the dark place. Now, there will be thousand years rule. Jesus will rule this earth and along with him, God's people will rule this earth. There will be different thrones and at the end of thousand years, there is a general resurrection. If you look at Revelation chapter 20 verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne and him was seated and who was seated on it. From his presence the earth sky fled away and no place was found them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. That is the second resurrection. Everybody on earth will come alive. All the people who had already died and those who live at that time, they will stand before the judgment. Non-Christians, yes. Christians, no, they will be with Jesus. Now there is a general judgment. And that judgment will be given based on the book of life. All the people who had the name in the book of life, they will go to heaven. They will join Jesus Christ. All the people, all the souls whose name was not there in the book of life will go to hell and they will perish. Now, with regard to the resurrection, <clears throat> those who believe in Jesus Christ, you don't have to worry because you are passed from death to life. Whoever has the Son has eternal life. And Jesus clearly said in the passage that was read to us today, I am the resurrection and the life. Here the life means eternal life. There is one more verse where we have, I am the way, the truth and the life. There the life refers to 
our earthly life. Here, I am the resurrection and the life means I am the resurrection and the eternal life. In other words, whoever believes in me, even though they die, yet they will live. Those who live and believe in me, there is no death for them. In what way? Because when you believe Jesus Christ, you live in Christ as you live on earth, and after your death, your soul will live in Jesus Christ. You will continue to live. Now, when Jesus comes, he will bring our souls and we will have a resurrected body and we will be like Jesus Christ. Actually, I have given the Bible verses. John, in chapter 1, John, chapter 5, we come to know John clearly saying, we don't know how we are going to be, but we will be like Jesus. We will be like Jesus. Just think of the body that Jesus had after his resurrection. He had a body. People touched him. Thomas touched him. Jesus asked them to touch him. So that was a touchable body. And he ate he ate fish. Okay? But at the same time, his body was something different because even though they closed the doors, Jesus' body was able to come through the door without disturbing it. He was able to pass through the walls. So that was the kind of body that Jesus had. In the same way, we are going to have that kind of body that Jesus had after his resurrection. And there is one more Bible verse that clearly tells us in Mark chapter 12, verse 25, where Jesus says, when some people came and questioned him, see, a woman got married to uh, seven persons because one after the other, the husband died, and she married again and again and what will happen to her in heaven. And Jesus said, no, you are mistaken. There won't be any marriage or marital status in heaven. They will be like angels. They will be like angels. In other words, we will be like Jesus Christ and we will have a transformed body. We will have a perfect body even when someone had a physical deformity on earth, it will be made perfect. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He wants us to hold on to these truths and hold on to it. Why? Because when you believe in Jesus resurrection, it has an impact on your life on earth. That we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where St. Paul talks about uh, death and how they transformed. And then finally in end verse, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. That is, you continue to work for the Lord. You prepare yourself for the heavenly place. In other words, the Lord wants you to live as if, or I won't say as if, because we are going to be people who are living in heaven along with Jesus Christ. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> Suppose somebody gets an opportunity to go to America. What will they do? Definitely, they will prepare themselves. Okay? If somebody is from, say, about in a village place, he will try to eat with spoon and fork. And he will collect warm clothing. So he will prepare himself to go to that particular place. In the same way, the Lord wants you and me to prepare ourselves 
and make ourselves grow in the image of God so that we will lead a suitable life that is suitable for living in heaven along with Jesus Christ. The Lord wants you and me to live a life worthy of our calling. That means we are called to be with Jesus Christ. And even though we die, we are going to rise again. So we have to hold on to this truth and live a life worthy of our calling in this earth. Now, how do we know that we are going to rise again? One, we all know that Jesus raised the dead. Jairus' daughter, the young man in a village called Nain, okay, he raised Lazarus. So we know that Jesus has the power to raise the dead. Then he also gave another proof. Time and again he told the disciples, even though they didn't understand, I'm going to die, I'm going to come alive. Now we have an empty tomb in Israel. Even now it's open and it's empty. Telling the whole world that Jesus rose from the dead. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what I would like to share with you is that know this whole picture about resurrection. And secondly, if we are going to come alive again after death, we have to prepare ourselves for that heavenly life. Jesus clearly said in John chapter 14, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. I go there and I will prepare a place for you. And when you die, you will be with me where I stay. Now, this is the hope that we have. That's why we behave differently whenever we lose our loved ones. We cry, okay, we cry. But at the same time, we are sure that we are going to see our loved ones once again. Now, we have passed on, passed on this truth even to our little children. And really, we are a privileged community. Once I had a very interesting experience. I was conducting a burial in a cemetery. <clears throat> and after the prayer, they closed the lid and started nailing the coffin. Then a little boy immediately pulled his father's shirt and said, Appa, Appa, Ani Adigirang, Ani Adigirang, Adina. Then the father said, uh, Governor Rabinar, <coughs> okay, just keep quiet. But he didn't keep quiet. I was wondering why he was saying that, why he is a little upset about nailing the uh, coffin. <coughs> then he slowly said, Appa, Ani Achita, Yes, Sami Varma, Tata, Yabdi, Anchi Pare. So, the truth about resurrection is very much strong in our Christian community. And that shapes our life, that really shapes our life. There is an imaginative uh, story uh, about a person who dreamt about hell. He saw himself in that vision in hell. And there was a big banquet. There was all kinds of items that we see in a wedding. But they were fighting with each other. They were screaming, pushing others. Then he was wondering what was happening. And he saw an iron pipe in both their hands. Sorry, in both their hands. They were able to take the item, say chicken 65. They were able to take the chicken 65 but they were unable to put it in their mouth because they cannot bend the hand. So there was hustle and bustle and people pushed and they were screaming and fighting with each other. Then he had, after some time, he had another vision. He saw heaven, there also a banquet, 
and people had the pipes. But they were laughing and enjoying their meal. And you know the answer, okay? They were able to take the chicken 65, they were unable to put it in their own mouth, but they were able to feed the other people. Even though there is an imaginative story, the lesson is that the people who had learned to love others on earth were able to do the same in heaven too. In other words, the people who are able to love God and love other people are judged and they were eligible to be in the place of God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, resurrection is a powerful truth that we hold on to. No other religion believes in the same way that we believe. Yes, Muslims believe in life after death. Zoroastrians believe in life after death, but there is no surety for them. What is the difference between the Muslims and Zoroastrians and us? We are sure. Muslims, they don't have a surety. They believe in life after death. They also believe in heaven and hell. Zoroastrians also believe in heaven and hell. But for them, there is no surety. They are not sure that they will go to heaven. But we have the assurance. Because Christ has promised that whoever believes in him will never die. Even though he dies, he will continue to live. Let's keep a moment of silence. Loving God, we thank you for enabling us to receive the truth about life after death. Many people live in this world without knowing this truth. Many people live and die without knowing that there is life after death. But thank you, Lord. Thank you for enabling us to receive the truth. We are no longer afraid of death. For us, death is a gain. Yes, Lord. Thank you for giving us the eternal life. Yes, we strongly believe in you. And particularly, whenever we take part in the Holy Communion, we are assured of everlasting life. As you have promised, Whoever eats my flesh will have everlasting life. Yes, Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, at the same time, we ask ourselves, are we leading a life worthy of our calling? Are we leading a life as children of heaven? Are we leading a life so that that will make us worthy to be like Jesus? Yes, Master. Help us to live on earth a witnessful life so that we will know for sure that we will continue to live in Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, you are going to come once again. You are going to raise the dead. Especially, first you will raise those who die in you. And all the believers who are going to be there on earth when you come will be transformed. And they will join you in clouds. And they all will rule along with you this world for a thousand years. Yes, Lord, after that, we know that there is going to be a general resurrection where all people on earth will come alive and they will be judged. Lord, we thank you for enabling us to participate in the first resurrection itself. 
Help us to know the truth, O Lord, because when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. Free from all kinds of doubts, whether we'll go to heaven or not. No, Lord, we know that you're going to be with you. We are your children. We believe in you. You died for us. You bore all our sins on the cross and you rose again and you shared the victory over death with each and every one of us. And we are going to see our parents who had gone before. We are going to see our ancestors, ancestors the believers in heaven. We thank you for this privilege, O oh Lord. Many people don't have this faith. Many people don't even know this truth. But we thank you for the privilege that you've given us to know the truth and live accordingly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.